All right. Let's go ahead do the data analysis for our fashion image data. So first of all, we are gonna see here what this data key contains here. So I write here fashion amnist data. We should be able to see here the data. So there are total 784 columns. That means if you multiply here 28 multiplied by 28, you should be able to see here total 784. That's the total number of individual pixels available in each image here. So this data is your input image. Now I'm going to save this input image into X variable that is going to be your input feature. And thereafter I type here fashion underscore mnist and in that I write here target. So if I write here target Okay, so this person is not right here. So with the target, I get here 0 to 9 numbers here. These are the unique numbers. You see there 0 to 9 unique numbers are here. So when you have the unique numbers, then that means these are classes here. So these are the 10 classes here. So these are the 10 classes and all these 10 classes you can get with their index. A class number 9 that means it is ankle boot and class index 0 that means it is t-shirt. Alright, so this one I am going to store into y. So we have got our input and output data. Let's go ahead and see some other uh, the features, some other keys what we have here. What does that mean? So this frame you get data in frame if you say a frame equal to 1. So in the frame, you will be having your input and output together. You see your input, all these pixels, 784 pixels, which are feature X and the output, which is a class. So X and Y concatenated together, that is getting here with the frame, which is, uh, which is a data frame. If you type here categories, so with this uh, category, it seems like it, there, there is nothing there. And the feature name, you will get all those pixels name as its a feature name. And the target name is obviously there is the class. Class was the target name. So you will get here just the class as the target name. I'm just going to get here the description of this fashion image data. Then we will move ahead. I'm just going to get it something like this. Print fashion amnist description. So this is the same description what we had seen on internet. It says that 60,000 examples for training and 10,000 examples for the testing. Let's go ahead and check the shape of X and Y. So I check here shape of X and shape of Y. With this you can see there are 70,000 uh, input features are there, 10,000 10, uh, the target features are there. Uh, sorry, the 70,000 for input and the target features in that you can divide it as 60,000 input features and the 10 60,000 input features for a training and other rest 10,000 features for the testing. All right, let's go ahead visualize our data. So we are going to visualize our data, then we will move to make our deep neural network. So we'll be writing here a code to visualize our data, something like this. All right. So I, first of all, uh, I'm going to set here a figure size and the figure quality by typing here plt dot rc params. In that I set here figure dot uh, fig size. In figure dot fig size, I'm going to set here five cross five is figure size. Then I set here plt dot rc params and in that I set here figure dot dot per inches that is the dpi here I set it as 100. All right so I got here all the uh, you know I, I just set here the features uh, I set here a figures quality and figure size. Now I'm going to now I'm going to uh, plot these input features for all the unique y values. So I write here digits, all right, or you can say uh, class indices is equal to y dot unique. 
So what happened in this case when I say y dot unique, I'll be getting here all these unique y values which are 0 to 9 there. Do you see there? These are 0 to 9 unique values are here. Once you have these, then I'm just going to, uh, you know, I'm just going to uh, sort this. You can just simply type here dot sort, then you should be able to, okay, seems like sort is not working. So I'm just going to get, make it as a list. Then this class indices, I'm just going to assign it here. And thereafter, I'm just going to print it here. All right, so this doesn't, uh, I'm sorry to do that. This should be here. In fact, I write here sort and then I write here class indices. It's something like this. Okay, I should be able to now get it from zero to nine. So all these class indices, now I need to iterate over uh, these class indices to plot our figure. The figure size here, I, I should be setting it here as 12 by 5 that would be better so the 12 pixel 12 inch it's in uh, width and 5 uh, inches in height there all right so we have all the unique classes now i'm going to write here for i in class indices something like this all right once you get here uh, for i in fact this would be like this for i in class indices once you have this I'm just gonna create here a subplot. So I write here plt dot subplot. I'm gonna use here two rows and uh, five columns. So what happened here? The subplot is something like this. In that I'm gonna use here two rows and the five columns. So something like this, there would be a five columns and the two rows. So I say that as a subplot two cross five. And in that, then I refer here the plot number one something like this so because i start with zero so the zero plus one it says that one when i is one then it refers to the second plot if you just simply run it you should be able to see that there would be a 10 plots there okay this i need to make it integer because this i is uh, their uh, string value all right so it goes something like this here all right so what I do here, I'm just going to make here i is equal to int i and then I'm just going to remove this part from here. Thereafter, I write here the plt dot tight underscore layout. So you get it something like this, wherever you had some overlapping with the help of tight layout, those overlappings are removed here. Now we are going to fill each of these subplots with the actual images there. So to fill the image, I need to call here the plt dot so, and then I need to filter out these values from our input feature. So we have input feature stored in x variable. So we have our x variable here. In this x variable, based on these, uh, you know, the index values there. What do you see there? Just a second. Okay, hold on. All right. So if we add y alongside this, then these pixel will be their, uh, you know, the respective values. So seems like if you see a fashion mnist data, a frame value, then how would you filter out these values? You have if this kind of the data in last you have their classes if you see those uh, classes just a second how can i uh, drag it here in the last okay so here you have a classes so we need to filter out here uh, classes there so if it is 0 1 2 3 4 5 like that so what i need to do in the same way for our x as well we need to say if y equal to equal to 0 so it's something like this. So everything is false. The reason is this y is actually their uh, str value. So it goes something like this. So you check, you check there. This the second value is true because if you check y, so you would be getting a, in y the second value is actually a class zero, and the third value is also class zero. 
So what we will do, we will compare these, you know, unique digit or class indices with the Y, if it is true or false, it's something like this. And then whatever the index come, so these index will go into X value. So accordingly, it will filter out those X value wherever it is true. So now you see it has filtered out, it has filtered out all those rows which represents here value equal to zero. Now you see there are 7000 rows only. Thereafter to get the first value, you can simply put here I lock, that's the index location. I put here a zero. So with this, you get only the first value. Thereafter, I write here two underscore numpy. So with this, you make it a numpy array. Thereafter, I make it here a reshape with 28 cross 28 so that I can make a one dimensional vector into two dimensional vector so that we can represent this image here. I write it here img equal to something like this. So if I just copy paste that from there and I put it here and then I put my img inside this, then you see all the zero will be plotted here in all subplots there. All right, so you see the zero. So at the zero, when I say he say it y equal to zero, then that means it is the t-shirt or the top there. All right. So everywhere that t-shirt and the top is plotted here. The reason is here, I did not make it dynamic. I just selected it here zero. So what I need to make it here str i because I had converted this here integer. Otherwise, I can simply just remove it from there. And then I can make it here as integer and then I can remove this str. So there would be just one time conversion. So in this, it will be now a dynamic. So the first value will be there, a t-shirt thereafter a trouser and so on. Now, if you want to give here a title, you can simply write here the plt dot title. And then you say here the classes and inside these classes, you give there this value, which is the integer i value, something like this. So it is t-shirt, here you have trouser, pullover, dress, coat, sandal, shirt, sneaker, bag, and ankle boot. So all these classes, all these, uh, you know, the data, you can see it here. So the size of this data, you can also clearly see with this image is 28 cross 28 here. All right. Perfect. So now our task is to write a deep neural network algorithm to classify these images based the, these images. So we'll design and, uh, uh, you know, the neural network, like what we had seen here, something like this, where input will be given, uh, uh, input will be given, and then the target class also will be given during the training. Once model is trained, then we should be able to get the output based on the provided, based on the provided images. All right. This is all about in this lesson. I'll see you in next one.